All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all honor and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Racha Kurash, the bonus to the elders and the apostles of the great millstone. Salutations to Allah, Akim, pushing swear with true charity and with charity. Yahweh is the true name and heavenly father whom the world ignorantly calls God and Jehovah Bahasham is in the name. Yahweh Shai is his son's name of the world and he calls Jesus and Racha Kurash is the Holy Spirit. As always, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, other Israelites, according to the Holy Scriptures, as well as the speckled bird, the scattered Israelite foreigners scattered amongst other nations whose outer appearance may seem to be of those nations to whom they've been scattered to, but whose lineage through their father's line go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are Israelites no matter what your outer appearance may seem to be. And as always, I'm your brother Yadiah from the Great Millstone Bread Chair in Chicago, and I'm back at you with another lesson. It's going to be entitled, Clean Up Your Temple, uh, in parentheses, Obedience. You see, because... Um, Hey, in order for the Lord to deal with you, hey, you have to be um, you have to be willing to uh, be disciplined and, and listen. You see. But uh, we're just going to get right into it. This first Corinthians three and 16, it says, know ye not that ye are the temple of the most high and that the spirit of the most high dwelleth in you. Right. And the Lord, uh, if the Lord is going to deal with, you, you know, he's going to uh, send a spirit into you. Right. It says, verse 17, if any man defile the temple of the most high. Him shall the most high destroy for the temple of the most high is holy, which temple ye are. So you got to take care. Uh, and by take care, you have to uh, ultimately strive uh, lawfully, you know, to the best of your abilities, because we in sinful flesh, which is uh, subject to vanity is going to you're going to go off. But to the best of your abilities, you know, you have to uh, try and be oh, be as obedient as possible. You cannot defile your temple, meaning do things that are uh, adverse to the word of the Lord, you see, it says, uh, right, let me hit this, uh, first Corinthians 6 and 18. It says, Flee fornication, uh, which hey, you got idolatry, uh, which is spiritual fornication, and then you also have, uh, hey, adultery, um, and all other manner of uh, unlawful sexual conduct, right? It says, Every sin that man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth sin. It's like it, but he that commit a fornication sin of against his own body. It says, What verse 19? What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, right? The Lord sends his spirit into you, right? It says, Which ye have, it's like it says, uh, verse, let me hit 19. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which ye have of the most high, and ye are not your own, right? So, this is the Lord ultimately. It's the Lord's. So you have to take care of uh, the Lord's temple, so to say. It says, for ye are brought with a price. Wherefore, glorify the most high in your body and in your spirit, which are the most highs. Right. And how do you do that? By obeying the Lord in spirit and in truth. This is uh, John 4 and 23. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the father in spirit and truth. For this father seek of such to worship him. Right. Not just a uh, mouth. Uh, not just people that that, that, that uh, say they love the Lord. Hey, your faith has to be perfected by works. They go hand in hand. It says that the most high is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth and complete obedience. You see. According to the word, uh, this is a uh, so hey, you got to do what the word says to the best of your abilities. Now, if you a proselyte, one that's newly coming into the faith. We not going to do this, do that. But hey, as you read and you uh, grow and you got to begin to exercise some restraint and cut off the things that are contrary to the word. Why? Because the, hey, the spirit of the Lord can't come into that temple, your body, if it's a. Uh, <laughs> if it's uh, evil, so to say, wisdom of Solomon 101, it says, love righteousness, ye that be judges of the earth. Think of the Lord with a good heart and in simplicity of heart, seek him. For he will be found of them that tempt him not and show of himself unto such as do not distrust him. You got to have that faith. <laughs> it says for forward thoughts separate from the most high and his power when it is tried, reprove the unwise. I'm looking at that word forward. I believe it goes in a perverse. Difficult to deal with. Contrary. Mm. Leading away from thoughts. So anything that's not according to the word, separate from the most high. Right. Proverbs, the third chapter tells you to lean not into thy own understanding, lean not into thy own understanding. Uh, forsake your way. Matter of fact, let me grab it because that's a good one. This Proverbs. Three and five, it says, trust in your with all thy heart. 
and lean not into thy own understanding, right? You can't be wise in your own conceit, your own thoughts. Yeah, you got to subdue yourself to the word of the Lord and, and have that faith in the Lord that what he says is best, even if you don't understand it at that moment. Verse six, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Put the Lord first. You know, it says, be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. So don't think that you know better than the heavenly father because you don't. It says it should be health to thy navel, navel and marrow to thy bones. It's going to do you good, right? But going back to this wisdom, Solomon 1 and 2, it says, For he will be found to such that tempt him not, and show of himself unto such as do not distrust him. For forward, when to that is contrary, thought separate from the Most High, and his power, when it is tried, reprove the unwise. And verse 4 is the point. It says, For unto a malicious soul, and malicious goes into an intent to do evil, Spiteful, characterized by malice, intended or intended to do harm. It says, soul wisdom shall not enter nor dwell in a body that is subject unto sin. Right. And the scriptures tell you that hey, we're not to have, let uh, sin have the dominion over us. Hey, hey, let not sin, Romans the sixth chapter, let not sin have dominion over you. So you got to exercise self uh, restraint. You can put the pork down. You know, <laughs> you can put, the, you know, you can put, uh, you can not commit adultery. You know, you can uh, do X, Y, and Z uh, things. According, you can do. You do the best that you can, of course, but it, uh, you also have to exercise that that temperance, that self control, that restraint. It says, "Nor do on a body that is subject unto sin." So uh, you have to take going back to the topic. You have to take care of your temple, man. You have to uh, uh, straighten up and uh, straighten your wings up and fly right. Roughly paraphrased, you know the proverb. You know, but you got to hey, trim off the things that separate from the most high little by little because it's a uh, continuing. Uh, the Lord is uh, continually working on us, so you, it's not just going to happen one day, but it is, it's a process. But hey, you have to be a uh, willing, you see. But it says verse five for the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove far from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. Right. You can't say that you believe the Lord, but you still want to dwell with your old sins. Be a, a wicked nigga. You see, but but claim you love the Lord. You can't do it. It says. Uh, Verse six, for wisdom is a loving spirit and will not acquit a blasphemer of his words for the most high is a witness of his reigns and a true beholder of his heart and a hearer of his tongue. You see, so hey, you actually hey, you have to clean up your temple, man. And it's little by little. I, I ain't going to eat that pork. That's that's one, you know, and when the Lord see you do that, he's like, OK, he, he OK, I'm, I'm going to see what see what he uh, let me see what I'm about. He did that one thing. Let me see if, you know, he really about it. OK, he stopped. You know, getting the lineups. Okay, 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 okay. He might be dealing. Then after, you know, however the Lord deal, you know, it talks about how wisdom, wisdom will bring you through a rough way, a rough way to uh, test you to make sure that you're worthy to receive her. The Lord will give you that increase. But hey, you have to exercise self-control, temperance. You got to fear the Lord. Because why? Fear. Hey, hey. Sirach 25 and 12, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of his love, right? And faith is the beginning of cleaving unto him. So if you fear, day, that's the uh, beginning of uh, obtaining the Lord's love, having that fear in him. Why? Because when you fear the Lord, you're not going to do things that he uh, told you not to do because you're scared of the recompense. And ultimately, you have that fearful reverence, that fearful respect of the Heavenly Father. Sirach 1 and 18, the fear of the Lord is a crown of wisdom, making peace and perfect health to flourish both which are the gifts of the most high and it enlarges their rejoicing that love him. 19 wisdom reign of down skill and knowledge of understanding, standing and exalt of them to honor that hold her fast and wisdom exalts you. <laughs> it says the root of wisdom is to fear the Lord. So in order to get to that wisdom, you have to fear the Lord. It says in the branches thereof are long life and it's going to lead to long life. It says the fear of the Lord driveth away sins and where where it is present, it turns away wrath. So if you fear the Lord, you're going to exercise the things that he told you to do and what not to do, which ultimately leads to that wisdom, which is the beginning of his, which is uh, which uh, makes you closer to the heavenly father. Wisdom of Solomon six and verse 12. Wisdom is glorious and never fadeth away. 
Yea, she is easily seen of them that love her and found of such as seek her. You have to thirst after this wisdom. It says she preventeth them that desire of her and making herself first known unto them. Whoso seek of her early shall have no great travail, for he shall find her sitting at his doors. It says to think therefore upon her is perfection of wisdom and whoso watcheth for her quickly. It's like and whoso watcheth for her quickly. It's like whoso watcheth for her shall quickly be without care. Right. And also, when you trust in the Lord, and you lean into the Lord and you understand the Lord's omnipotency, all power, all knowing omnipot omniscience. I believe that's the word. You understand that he controls everything and that's wisdom, which leads you to be without care. Verse 16, for she goeth about seeking such as worthy. Are, it's like it for she goeth about seeking such as are worthy of her. Right. Because you uh, you have to have a certain standard about yourself. Wisdom ain't just going to give yourself to the regular average pookie and Ray Ray. It says, show of herself favorably unto them in the ways and meet of them in every thought. For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline. You have to desire that discipline. And the care of discipline is love. And the scriptures say, if you love me, keep my commandments. Uh, discipline, control, self-control, regulation. And what's our regulation? What's our limits? What's our uh, limitations? The law says commandments. Now, we're not saved by works solely alone, but we're saved by faith and works. They prefer, perfect one another. That's in the book of James. Go read it. You see? But in order to get that wisdom, you have to have the desire of discipline. Being uh, instructed, subduing your own understanding. And hey, as I mentioned, it's a process, of course, little by little. It says in the care of discipline is love and love is the keeping of her laws and the giving heed unto her laws. So you're keeping the laws to the best of your, your ability. And we're not going to do it 100 percent perfect. It's just not programmed. We're not programmed to. But it says and giving heed unto her laws is the insurance of incorruption. And incorruption make of us near unto the most high. So when you're listening to what the Lord says and you having that faith in him and doing what he says, that gets you closer to the heavenly father. Therefore, the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. And that's going to ultimately bring us to the kingdom. If your delight be then in thrones and scepters, O ye kings of the people, honor wisdom that ye may reign forevermore. You see? So get the wisdom. But first to get the wisdom, you have to fear. And if you get the, if you got the fear, that means you're going to be disciplined. You see? And then from there, you start trimming away the fat. Psalms, and one may ask, how can I, how can I start my spiritual journey? Psalms 119 and 9, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? So how are you going to clean yourself up? How are you going to cleanse yourself from the filthy pollutions of this world? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. You see, by listening to what's in and obeying what's written within the scriptures. Ephesians 5 and 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the with the washing of water by the word. You see, so taking heed unto this word, you begin to clean up your temple. You see? So a Lord willing, this was an edifying, uplifting lesson. Call Halayim La, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Racha Kurash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of the great millstone. Salutations to all that I can push word to share with charity. Shalom, Brakatham, Wa Baba Ball, Kwam Yasharala.